What's your name? My name is Latija Mills. Tatiana Wallace. Ashley Show. Jessica Araj. Stephanie Subak. Quenisha Clemens. Isaiah Mustaya. Island Harris. Cameron Shakur. Alexis Calico. Jennifer Hearn. Loyola Cooks. <laughs> Demetrius Arm. I'm Fisher. How old are you? You don't mind me asking. <laughs> 48. I'm 22. I'm currently 19. I'm 17 years old. 16. 23. 18. 15. 17. I'm 19, turn 20 next month. I'm 21. 21. I'm 19 years old. I'm 17 years old. What is your ethnicity? I am South Korean. Biracial, half black, half white. I'm Arab. I look like a white girl, but I got a little flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Black. I'm black. I'm white. I'm Iraqi. I'm African American. I am black. African American. I am African American. Have you ever self harmed? Yes. <sighs> yeah, I have. Yes. 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 I have. Yes. I've never self harmed, but I contemplated doing it on uh, uh, two occasions. Yes. Yes. Yes, I have. Yes. When was your first time self harming? 16. Probably middle school. 2012, and I was 11 in 6th grade. It was like 16 or 17. Last August? The first time was at the age of 17. 7th grade, and I was 13. It's like 14, so probably around 8th grade. I was 15 years old. Around, you know, we graduated the same year, like that 2016 after summer. Um, I would say about... Um, I was in elementary school. I was 15. Um, fifth grade? What made you self harm? I was getting bullied at school, and my parents were lying to me, and my whole family had like a bunch of secrets that they didn't tell me, and I found out. And that's why everyone at school was bullying me. I was going through never having a dad, so it was like I kind of always like blame myself, like, oh, he's not here because of me, because he never wanted me, never, when I was born, he just never showed up, and he kept trying to come in and out of my life, but my mom was for it, I wasn't for it, because it's just like, it's always like broken promises, so it's just like, yeah. My god, mom was murdered, and it was really hard for me to deal with her being murdered, because I just met her, like, two. Take your time. I just met her and like, she was like the nicest person I ever met. And it was just really hard for me to deal with her death because it showed, like that was the first death I ever did in my life. And to have someone taken away from me compared to like, you know, like a natural death or just things like that. Like, it was really hard for me to deal with that. And I couldn't understand it. I couldn't wrap my, my mind around the fact of how fragile life is. And, I didn't feel like I had anyone to really talk to about it with because it was like everyone else was dealing with it, but it was like they already, they knew her, you know, and it was like they grew up with her because this is my, my dad's best friend, my dad's best friend's wife. And so they, they've known her for years, but I'm just not going to know her and I feel like I was robbed of the experience of Um, at that time, I felt like everything was kind of out of control. I wasn't doing well in anything, it seemed. Um, and so it felt like something that would give me some control back in my life, um, which turned out to be the opposite. Um, I just graduated high school in the uh, spring. I decided that I wasn't going to school. So I was just, well, I guess everyone leaves, all your friends and everyone. You know everyone you hang out with, everyone just, it's off doing their own thing. And looking at it, I felt like my life was almost at a standstill. Like I wasn't doing nothing with my life, you know. And uh, on top of that, uh, bad breakup, all of that, um, parents, it just all got to me at once. At the time, I was um, diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And um, it was my first time experiencing any intrusive thinking. So. Um, throughout the day, I would think to myself that I'm worthless or I'm not lovable. So 
um, that's what made me start to be so fun. I moved into a different school, so a different area was out of my element, and I didn't really fit in at all. I was bullied for how I looked, how I dressed, how I talked, how I walked, pretty much everything. And it caused me to go into a depression, and I felt there was nobody to talk to. Having her in my life, and then um, middle school was just really bad. Elementary middle school was just really bad because I lost my mom. My granddad passed away, and it was really hard to deal with that, cause like I just didn't know how to deal with it. You know, when did I lose? Like I, he passed away in my seventh grade year, so just two years after I lost my grandma, and I was still going through the things I was going through, like you know, like self harm and stuff like that. It wasn't as adamant, and it wasn't as um, it wasn't consecutively, but I was very depressed, and I was just kind of like at that point just living. And so, with him passing, it was just really hard because it was like, wow, like, I'm gonna have to keep dealing with this. Like, I'm, like people, you lose people, and it was just really hard because you don't think about that. Like, you, you don't ever think about how unexpected life really is. Literally anything happened at this moment. This entire building can blow up right now. But we don't think from that standpoint. And it's like, we can't think from that standpoint because then, we would be living life on eggshells. But it's like you should think from that standpoint because then you would take life and appreciate it to its fullest value. Um, I just started like being overwhelmed with family issues and I just felt like I wasn't like getting the support that I needed during that time. So I just felt like I guess I needed to self-harm myself and try to take my life away. I was uncomfortable with myself. I wasn't really happy with like how I felt. And I always felt like I wasn't who I could have been, so I kind of took it out on myself. I was going through a lot of family issues, and I was having issues with my dad, and he was being extremely emotionally abusive, and I felt like the only way that I could escape that mental abuse was to self-harm. Um, when I was a kid, I was sexually assaulted. Um, it happened for a few years. I didn't really know how to cope with it because like when you're a kid, <laughs> when you're a kid, um, you don't know how to like internally emotionalize those things, like how to feel about them. So it was just something that was on my chest and on my shoulders for a while. And I actually remember watching TV one night, it's probably like three in the morning, and there was a program about self-harming. Mm -hmm. And the girl was like, well, when I self-harm, the weight's just off my shoulders. And being a kid with that weight, growing up in an Arab home where like talking about those things are taboo, I just wanted that weight off. So when I did start self-harming, I was like, well, I'm just gonna do it once. Like, I'm gonna see how it feels. Like, I wanna know what she's talking about. Like, I wanna feel light again. And I did it, and I did feel light again. And that was like the holy grail. Like, I can feel normal. Everyone just wants to be normal. Um, my mother passed away, and when she passed away, and I felt like I had no one else to be there for me, even though I had siblings that was older than me, um, I just felt like that's who I was closest to. So since she was gone, I decided I wanted to be wherever she was. That's actually I just didn't feel good enough. I felt worthless. So as a way to cope with that pain, I would I didn't know what I was doing. I just went to college just to go, and it was bad. All my friends was way over there. I'm watching like they Snapchat stories. They having a blast. I'm over here just like taking classes at this 
it, it was like a big, like my high school was bigger than the community college. So I was just like, man, this is terrible. Um, I, I was like drinking some, some pop and then I was just looking at the like, little can on my finger and, and it felt kind of nice, I guess. As I grew up in like ninth grade, I stopped self-harming and um, well, the last time I was self-harmed was this summer. Um, to be transparent, I, I cut my face. Um, but the last time before that was in a temporary year. And I, um, I burned my face. I'm a burn mark right here. And I remember like, when my dad like saw it, he's like, who burned you? And, like, he was like, Mad, I'm looking like this is your doing. Like, not blaming him or my family for me being for self harming, but it's just like there are signs. There's there that is signs. You don't even someone doesn't even have to be going through things for you to care how they feel. And so it was just really hard for me to be open with my family about the things I was going through because I remember one day I was in a basement and I was cutting my wrist, and you and Daddy came home. And I walked upstairs, and I just walked to my room. And y'all didn't say anything to me, my, my wrist was bleeding. Did we see? No, y'all saw me, but y'all didn't see my wrist bleeding. But like, y'all didn't even acknowledge me. And that made it worse. This one got like 11 minutes. If you could tell those who so far, one thing, what would it be? Um, I'd probably tell them that it's not, there's no, it's not gonna fix anything. Um, and that it's just not the way to do things and to get the help that they need because everyone needs help sometimes. Focus on what makes you, you, if that makes sense. My, my sort of outlet was like, oh, it's the clothes. And just focusing on them. Um, what I wanted to do with that. You know, if you're an artist, then you can put it all in art, and that's how you sort of deal with the various demons and vices that we all have. I'll say what it got me through it is basically learning yourself, like figuring out <clears throat> what you want to do, figuring out what makes you happy, like your hobbies. I picked up DJing, I, I go out, have fun with my friends, just Hang out with your friends, talk. Talking helps. I, me personally, I've been going to a counselor since I was little. It never helped me. But talking to other people that could relate to me, it helped. Music helped me. A lot of that stuff helped me. So I would just say, just try to stay positive and be around good energy and good people to just get you through stuff. Seek help and that somebody actually cares and someone loves you for who you are, regardless of if you sell time or not. And there is a way out. That you're not alone and people actually care. I actually used to just just hide it from people. Like I never did any like cuts or anything that people would actually visibly be able to see unless like I showed them. So it's really about like how comfortable you are with telling people because that's the first thing you should do is to tell somebody. I would tell them to figure out what's causing them to want to self-harm. There's always an underlying issue. Um, there's always, there's gonna be a reason why you wanna do that, and it's not gonna be a positive one. Hurting yourself, I was told that it was a form of self-hate, and you don't wanna hate yourself, because everyone in their state is a beautiful human being, and you wanna show yourself love. And if there's something hurting you, if there's something causing pain, you need to figure out what that is, and you need to heal that to fully heal yourself. Harming yourself isn't gonna heal. It's gonna put a band-aid on it, 
but it's not going to fully heal what's wrong with you. I would tell them not to do it because I felt extremely guilty every time I did it. You're in the moment and you feel like that's the only thing that matters, but as soon as you're done, you feel guilty. And my reasoning was is if I had kids one day and they looked at me and they would ask me, what is this? Like, mommy, what's this? And I wouldn't know what to say. Uh, I would tell them to get help because talking to someone is very important and it helps more than they would know. There, there's a, a brighter day after the storm. Like, there always is. Like, life is unexpected. And the problem with us is that we, we want things, we're, 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 we're children, we want things when we want it. It's like, be happy already. It's like, it doesn't work like that. I, I've had happy moments within the storm, but there was a long time before I was a genuine being happy for a long, sustained amount of time. But that's okay because that's what life is. And there's not going to be happy moments every day. There's not going to be sad moments every day. Sometimes the sad moments may last for forever. And those sad moments feel like forever. They feel like an eternity. And the happy moments feel like, like they feel like they're, they're, they're gone in a way. But you just have to dwell in the happy moments and relive those happy moments when you're going through the bad things. And that's kind of the point of why I'm so vulnerable and open on social media. Because if you look on other celebrities pages, it's just like, oh yeah, I got a new car, got that bag on me. Like, it's just a bunch of like good things. So you feel like, oh, their life is amazing. They only experience good things. When in reality, your wife is leaving them. It's a bunch of things that's going on with them that are, that they could be open about that they're not. And then it causes people to feel like the things that they're going through isn't real or they're the only one going through. And so I just try to be as vulnerable as I can be to show people that we're all human, you know, like it's, it's To let them know that they're not alone, because I know when I was going through it, I felt alone to like talk about it with people. Or like what I used to do when I used to self-harm, I used to write poetry, like to write out my emotions. So, you know, <laughs> to try to just get it out of your system or find ways to cope with it. Um, I would say keep going because it does get better. I know that sounds very really cliche, but if I can do it, you can too. That it's better to just work on the problems than just inflict it out to yourself. I look at it as being able to be here and not have taken my life allows me to help somebody else realize that they don't have to take their life. I have a surprise for you. Okay. You have to close your eyes. But you gotta cover them. Ooh, yep, there we go. I have a surprise for you. Okay. You have to close your eyes. But you gotta cover them. Ooh, yep, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Okay, so I want you to open it up. Okay. And look at it. Do you know how like, there's things on the show? Okay, so this one isn't. Look at the wrist. So, this project that we're doing, and the project that you're a part of, mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that you're a part of it, is to promote the fact and educate people that um, there's not a specific demographic that affects, that depression affects, and there's not a specific demographic that self harms, whether you're young, older, African American, Asian, white, etc. It affects everyone. And that's a reality that a lot of people don't realize they don't understand because there's, you know, there's the stereotypes mm -hmm. of it being a white thing or of it being a female thing. And so I'm posting this video on a website and I'm on YouTube and everywhere really, March 1st on my birthday. And my birthday just happens to be National Self-Harm Awareness Day. And the purpose of these hoodies specifically, more so than the gray ones, is to give strength and help those who have self harm because you know you put the hoodie on and it covers your scars. You look down and you see, I feel like I'm not strong, and I hope that that makes people feel strong mm -hmm. and remind them how strong they actually are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of like frozen. <laughs> yeah. Is hugging gonna make you want to freeze? Okay. Open your eyes. Okay. 
Oh my gosh, this is the one that I wanted. Oh my God, thank you so much. It feels so soft. Okay. I feel weak, but no, but I know I'm strong. That's me. <laughs> All right, you go be honest. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you. Okay, so open it up. I wanna open it up. Look how we rocking out here. You ever seen the shoulders? You know how you're doing the shoulder? Yeah. Yeah, we ain't doing that no more. No. No, look at the, look at the wrist. Can you read that a lot? That for that wrist first. This one? Mm -hmm. I feel weak. I know, I'm, but I know I'm strong. Okay, keep your eyes on. Have you seen my hoodies? Ah, uh, yeah. Do you like my hoodies? I like them a lot. I wow. wish I could have gotten one. Have you seen um, what I've been tweeting lately? The saying? That you have an announcement? <laughs> the announcement? Have you seen. Uh, what am I going to say? That? I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. Mm -hmm. You like that saying? Yeah, I do. Okay, help me out. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I want you to look at it. I want you to open it up. Look at it. Check it out. <laughs> See how we rock it. This is really nice. Do you like the shoulder thing that I do with these? Yeah. Okay, so these don't have a shoulder, they have a wrist. Yeah. This is really cool. Can you read the wrist out loud? Uh, I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. Okay, so do you know about my clothing ring? Yes, I do. Okay, do you like the hoodies? Yes, they're amazing. Come here. Oh my god, these are so pretty. Okay, so I want you to look at the wrist. Which one is it? This? Is it this one? Okay. That one first. Okay, this one first. I feel weak. And then the other one. But I know I'm strong. I seen that hoodie or the blanket that you got. Yes. And you made that up, right? Mm-hmm. This is amazing. I love this. I was looking at your hoodies. I was like, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this. This is so nice. So that's why I put everything on the wrist. So people can put the hoodies on, cover up the wrist, and when they look down at the wrist, they don't see the scars, they see that those positive affirmations. And so this is the this is the this this is what you're a part of. And I'm really happy that you are here to be a part of this. I'm really happy that I'm just happy you're here. I'm happy that you made it through what you have made it through. I am too. Hey, I can I say that too. Thank you very much. Okay, open your eyes. Thank you, friend. <laughs> I appreciate this. Open it up. Open Look it? At, yeah, open it up. Look at the wrist. Other wrist. Can you read it out loud? From the, that wrist to the other one? I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. That's so cool. An amazing idea. Cause there are definitely days when I feel like, well, I'm just gonna do this again. Like, I just need, like, almost like an addict. Like, I just need one hit, just like one, one little cut, just to make me feel better. And those are the times when I feel weak, but I know that I have strength in me. Yeah. So I need to not do that because I don't want to go back to that place where I was at. My mantra, my. Something I use for self-affirmation, which is I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. So they can, the whole point of that saying is to acknowledge, to acknowledge and realize what you're going through, but also to acknowledge the strength that you have. And so I'm really excited. But it's a new day. Now it's time for us to get up and die. I just hope that today's a good day. Please let good things come in my way I don't care about whatever you say I just hope that today's a good day Please let good things come in my way I don't care about whatever you Cry say Crying always gives me a headache, it's so bad It do Cause you just be, come on dog. I just cry I told you we were gonna connect This is stupid, wow You <laughs> better make me cry Cause I feel it. Like. If you cry, I'm gonna cry. And then we'll be crying together. What, what's this time? 
I'm a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. That's why we're both oh, gonna cry. That's why we're awesome people. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you steal stuff on? Um, I've been clean for about um, close to a month. Proud of you. Thanks. Okay, so I have a surprise. Okay. I really appreciate you. I'm glad you are a part of my son's life. Um, I know I harass you a lot, <laughs> but anybody that can tell you would tell you if I don't mess with you, that means I don't want you around him because I only want certain people around him. And so when I mess with you, it's in love. Come here, come on. You can. Group <laughs> hug. Right. You don't want to. <laughs> you know, I, you, right? I think it did it for me to keep being the parent that I always felt that I wanted to be. I'm sorry. And that was to be there for you guys at all times. <laughs> Today's a good day Please let good things come in my way I don't care about whatever you say A new day, a new day, a new day A new day, a new day, a new day, yeah 